it, it seems like at first you were not happy with Ms. Ryder's um, representation, and then you were kind of okay with it. I'm never okay with, with it okay. at all. And uh, so here's the question. Uh, in a request for new counsel, uh, I need to put you under oath, and you need to explain to me why, in detail, you won't, don't want her to represent you. Absolutely. So if you raise your right hand, other right hand, there you go. Sorry. Under penalty of perjury, do you swear or affirm the information you're about to give in this court and cost shall be the truth? Yes, no. All right, go ahead and have a seat. Now, um, by my record, you've had a number of attorneys appointed by the court. Yes. Do you remember how many? Uh, I have four of them and two substitutes. Okay. You've had four attorneys and two substitutions by the court. Yes, no. What about the other two? Uh, I know. The first man, he was the arraignment. Uh, and Carrie Wyler mentioned that it was her practice, their practice to have him step in. So I didn't count him as a public defender. But uh, the remaining on the 27th of May, which was set for a preliminary hearing that I never got because Carrie Wyler and District Attorney De Douglas Hansen never showed to it. And I have a judge on audio transcript actually setting that court date. And they missed it, and she sent in, Carrie Wyland sent in Michael Lee Griffith in her uh, replace. She replaced him and didn't show up, even though she knew was she knew she was my attorney at the time and that I had a preliminary hearing set, and I was wondering why I was stripped from that when a judge uh, sent it, said, you know, preliminary hearing set, for May 27th, and an indictment if one should be issued. And and the conflict of interest with the public defenders started to occur is because I never waived my preliminary hearing rights away. And I found out through my audios that uh, Carrie and Douglas Hansen had waived my preliminary hearings away through uh, email. Off-court records, something I never knew about because I never talked to... Uh, Gary Wyland ever okay. in my life. But you were subsequently indicted. Yes. Okay. And you had the public defender at that point. I didn't get an indictment until October. Okay. So once you got the indictment, who was your lawyer then? Uh, Jessica Kempe. Okay, Ms. Kempe. And did there come a time when you became uh, un- uh, did not like Ms. Campy's representation. Uh, to be completely honest with you, Your Honor, I only met her one time, and uh, I had emailed her expressing uh, why my preliminary hearing was uh, stripped from me, why nobody came. So she actually investigated it, and she said Carrie Wyland wrote in her notes that she made a visit to me and then I went as far as to go down to the Marion County Court uh, uh, Annex and I asked to get a printout of her visitation log and come to find out she never made any professional visits to me and what happened was she did make a visit uh, June 1st which was after it was I can remember very vacantly that it was like real late, I was laying in the bed in my cell and they opened it up and said I, I had an attorney visit and it was finally Carrie Wiley who I never even met but previously she already had waived away all my rights. So so did you ask that she be, uh, that someone else be substituted in? As uh, a actually she uh, wrote, because I had wrote a complaint on her misconduct to the state bar and we were uh, going through this for about uh, half of uh, a year, six months and she wrote in her report that she wasn't able to, uh, or she quit the job as public defender. She took up a job down in Benton County for assistant district attorney. 
And then that's when Jessica Kempsey replaced her. Okay. But Ms. Kempsey is the one that you filed a bar complaint against? No, I filed the complaint against uh, Carrie A. Whiteley, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So then Ms. Kempsey filed a motion to withdraw because there was a conflict between you and her. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and so then what happens? I appointed Mr. David Coons. Yes. Okay. And then Mr. Coons was your lawyer, court appointed. And <clears throat> uh, you then asked, after you had Mr. Coons, you asked for a different lawyer. See, that's where they're confusing you at, Your Honor. I never ever asked for a public defender. I, I stressed the uh, issue of why didn't the district attorney take this evidence that he supposedly had to a preliminary hearing to actually get an a, a indictment, you know? And that's, that's been my argument up until this day because it's, it's my constitutional right to a fast and speedy trial. Can, can we move past the preliminary hearing? Yes. Okay. So, you had Mr. Coons. Yes. And he filed an affidavit that said, the attorney-client relationship has deteriorated to an unaccepted level. And that he was also ethically required to withdraw, just like Ms. Campy. So, do you feel like that was accurate, that you guys really didn't get along? I I never really, I talked to him twice in actual meetings. Most of it came through mental and that was through emails. I've, I've created several different folders and keeping up with these people. And can, can we just ask you this? Did you want Mr. Coons to stay as your lawyer? He was actually a good attorney. Okay. The, what I found out is that his disciplinary action uh, through the state bar, because I was a little bit worried about uh, him, and they want me to explain to them what happened May 16th, but they never let me explain it, or they never ever let me... So you turned Mr. Coons into the bar? Uh, no, I didn't turn him into the bar. You said something about they wanted you to explain about May 16th. We're talking about Mr. Coon. Yes. They, he, Who's, who wanted you to explain? Mr. Coon wanted me to explain to him why I went to the bar on my concerns about him because I had done uh, some investigation on him, and I told him... Uh, so well, you went to the bar to talk about Mr. Coon. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So then I appointed Ms. Ryder to represent you. Yes. Okay. And what are your concerns about Ms. Ryder's representation of you? She, from when Mr. Coon withdrawed off my case and, and passed it off to Ms. Ryder, I don't know what transpired between them two, but she instantly had this, this attitude towards me which made me feel like she wasn't there to listen to me. She, I, I try to exercise my right as far as bringing some type of support with me because of I've been through so many different attorneys and I was having trust issues. So I was like, I talked to my doctor and he, he advised me to bring along somebody that could help me, you know, because of my stress and my anxiety problems and stuff. It's real bad. So I, I took my support with me, and she immediately kicked them out. Like, she kicked them out, didn't let me explain nothing. She kept on saying how much of a concrete case this was, and never once have I been able to introduce anything, any of my, my evidence that I got from Carrie Wyman in the first discovery that I got was some audio CDs, which proven that... I gave officers only to search my vehicle and I was trying to show her the proof so I could build a stronger and better defense, but I don't have no say. You know, I don't, ha I, 
only talk to her through emails. And this this is what I do every day, is try to read and understand her because there's no, I, I can't meet her. She canceled my visits at the state bar claiming that she needed more time to file motions that Kuhn filed for me in February 5th. 